headed over here toward me now. So this is the day after we were broke down all afternoon on Thursday. Kevin's on the bulldozer down there. Pushing a uh, slot where Chad can get up and down. So once he gets that fixed up, then uh, Kevin will come up here and crank up and get to running. See, that's just a hole down there. all y'all could stand right here where I'm at and uh, realize the size of that machine first of all is it's a lot bigger than what it looks on the screens that y'all are watching and on and just the sheer power of what that machine is capable of doing is incredible I mean 
he grappled that entire pile right there, set it over, but you see how much weight he pulled up, you know, with the tops and the trees. So when y'all see this video, by the time y'all see it, the next time it will be, we will have new tires on the back of that machine. They're gonna put them on uh, Saturday, tomorrow, Saturday. So they'll put those tires, they'll put four tires on it, new ones, and get them on there because we're about to have to have them on it. So I get at, you know, people say things about chains and the tracks and all that stuff for that machine. We can't run them on that machine uh, because of Chad, because of the what he pulls with it. It would not the machine would not stay together at all if we did that because Chad Chad maxes the machine out He's the only man pulling on the skitter in this Ground like this that we're in right here, and he's still getting 16 17 loads a day out by himself So you can't even see Derek down there. He's off that hill. You can't even see that his machine at all All you can see is the treetops down there You see Kevin just back, there's Kevin, he just backed at the hill on the dozer. So he'll build Chad a road down in there and then Chad will use that slot, that shelf. He's actually cutting a shelf in the side of that, end of that ridge down there to get into that bottom. And then Chad will use that shelf to come up. It'll speed him up quite a bit. So if he was pulling drags like that one he's got right now, we could run chains and tracks on it and we'd be okay. But there again, for what he's pulling each pull, the machine would never hold up. They, the weak link on that thing is the drive line, uh, drive shafts and yokes and stuff. And that's a lot better than destroying that bogey on the back end. like much being a load of wood about one more drag and it'll be a load
So we did get the tires put on the 635 last night. They come in uh, after we left and started on them when we got done on Friday afternoon and put all four of them. It was uh, on after dark there when they when they got wrapped up. So the 635's got, got new tires on it now on the back end of it, the four on the back, the front were, the front were fine on it. So enjoy the rest of this video as it goes on through it. So uh, we'll see y'all. So that plan is today, uh, Hunter was going to come over here and we were going to go put the three new feeders out right there that I picked up the other night down in Utah, Alabama. I didn't even know it was going to rain today. Got up this morning and got ready and walked out of the carport and it was raining. I was like, golly. I looked at the radar and I mean, it looks like we're going to get rain for a while. I mean, it's on up in the morning now and... So I'll just wait till it uh till it quits because I'm not gonna fool with them in the in the rain. Those are some uh those are some very nice feeders. They got a uh, few things on them that that I didn't realize they had on them when I when I went down there and bought them. And I'll show you all that once uh when I go to set them up. You can see the solar panels on the mounted to the side of them right there. And I'll kind of go over them when I when I get them set up and put the corn in them there. So Hunter come down here with me last night and he he usually come he usually comes over every Friday night and eats eats dinner with us at the house here. And we uh I worked on my saw chains uh I run in that red oak the other day in that video where that oak um on that steep hill that gave me so much trouble. Worked on them. I actually, uh, on this chain here, this is the 572 with a 3H chain, full comp, non-skip right there. I took the gullet out of this chain right here, filed it out, and then came back and worked it. And this one right here is like a razor blade. And then I worked on the, the 550 over there. I also worked on it too. Got it up to snuff and fixed up and I was going to run these saws today and as soon as it would quit raining I, I'm going to put the feeders out and I'm going to run these saws again here but so uh he had we talked about chainsaws and chains and he watched me sharpen them he's watched me sharpen before and he's kind of got an interest in it so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with Hunter a little bit I'm going to bring him over here and I'm going to teach him some stuff about the bar tips and how to run them and then i've got another guy here local that sent me some messages asking about chainsaws and he told me he said this will be my first chainsaw to ever own so i told him i said look i said why don't you come over here and i'll suit you up and let you run some of my saws i got saws all the way from 38 cc's up to uh 94 cc's right there you know, kind of let him mess with him a little bit before he goes and just buys him a saw. So uh, he's gonna take me up on that, and I'd rather I'd rather work with somebody and see him grab something and get hurt. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what the saw classes are about: is to show uh, that kind of stuff like that. Ain't this funny? I've got there's three files right there, and they're different sizes. You got a uh, uh, five thirty seconds, three sixteenths, and a seven thirty seconds. They file three different size chains. Then I got another file gauge right there that I use on the on the three twenty five. Sometimes I use it a little bit, and then of course the flat file for rakers. And then just to bare file, this is what I cut the uh, cut the gullet out on this three H chain. Was this one right here? This bare file right there. It's crazy the amount of stuff that you've got to have if you run a lot of a lot of different stuff and then this happens to be a skip tooth chain right here you can see it skips a tooth right there i've had a lot of questions in the in the videos want me to talk about chains and the differences and when to run what and i just i kind of take that stuff for granted and that was a big question in this past weekend saw class looking at the weather for the chainsaw class coming up this next weekend the felon class looks spectacular again. So uh, 
maybe it'll stay like that all during the week this week and we'll roll in here on friday we've got i'm going to do a lot of different things with that with that class and and we're actually going to start it on friday night when people come in here we're going to go ahead and uh get rolling with it then and we're we're definitely going to run saws friday night that's for sure uh when everybody gets in here and and we're going to take all hoop as people gets in here we're going i'm just going to we're going to start firing them up and and get to rolling i've had some folks asking about the you know the milwaukee hus varner i'm going to run them together i'm going to do some stuff with that i'm going to run them together and we're just going to see what the dip you know how much different cutting difference it is between those two battery saws right there the climbing competition that's coming up i'm going to take I'm going to take some of my saws with me. I'm going to take the 572, and I'm going to take the 550 also. And I've got a guy with Huss Warner that we're actually going to race a couple of saws. We're going to race some 372s is what we're going to do. He's got one, and I've got one, and we're going to race them against one another. There's been a lot of smack talking going on. And so there's a lot on the line on this deal. That's all going to be on, on video, so that's going to be really good. The climbing competition is going to be in uh, Kingston, Georgia, uh, November the 13th, 14th, and the 15th, 2020. And the public is invited to come. It's open to the public. And uh, me and Jill will be there uh, with Huss Varner. And you can test drive chainsaws if you want to. We're just gonna watch it rain for a little bit. So uh, I'll catch y'all later. Later, taters. So all the details for the climbing competition is right down below the address where it's at over there in Kingston. So if you're available and can come, come on out, man. I'll, we'll be there. We'll talk chainsaws. We'll have a good time. I mean, there's a lot of people in and around that area that uh, follow my stuff day in and day out. So uh, we'll have fun. We'll see y'all.